David's coding here, and you could be too. I wanted to make this video to share how anybody programming in Python can use a program called Gradio to take their deployment of their programs to the next level. So this is an interface I built to deploy my program, and I wanted to share this use case. So last year, I made this tool. It's uh, AutoTabber. It basically converts a MIDI file, which is a set of instructions for a computer to play music, to a guitar tab, which is a set of instructions for a person to play music on the guitar. So this wasn't the easiest tool in the world to use. There's a lot of things to see here, uh, a lot of things to understand if someone was to be comfortable with this, you gotta type things in, et cetera. It's kind of cumbersome. And so what I've created now is the interface you saw a minute ago where everything is very visual, very modern, very sleek. It's just you know drag and drop, buttons, sliders, this kind of thing. So it's a really great tool that Gradio offers, a really great foundation on which you can build whatever kind of interface you want. And so for the rest of the video, I'll take a couple of minutes to go through a few examples on how to actually use this. If you come to the Google Collaboratory page, link in the description, you're going to hit connect on the top right. Then all you got to do is hit the play button on the setup code block, and then you're going to want to run the run app cell. So hit that, expand the run app cell, expand the launch interface cell, and we'll fast forward and see in a minute our graphic user interface appears. All right, so on average, that takes me about two minutes, but it can take longer if the computer on Google's server is uh, downloading the files it needs very slowly. So here's the interface. We're still in the Google Collaboratory environment, and so the interface is kind of in a small viewing window. We can go to full screen by hitting the local host button. So I'll go to full screen, and now we're going to see the interface as we saw it previously at the start of the video. So how you're going to use this is basically you're going to start off by just dragging and dropping your file in. I'm going to use this sample of Born to be Yours by Kygo. I got this MIDI file from uh, freemidi.org, and you can see that one here. And what you're going to do now is decide how many uh, measures or bars of the song you want to bring in. So I'll just take 1 to 10. It'll process faster. And you could also decide which parts you want to cut. We'll look at that in a minute. So you'll hit View Score for tabbing. And now it's going to load an audio sample of what you've pulled out, as well as a visualization of that. So I'll hit the audio sample. We'll see what it sounds like. Nice. So you can see there's two parts detected, a piano part and an unnamed part. So it seems like the piano part is capturing the melody. And we'll cut that out since we'd want to just play the background chords on the guitar and see what that sounds like. So parts to cut, I see here that's part zero is the piano. So I'll put a zero in there. Hit view score once again. And now when I see the visualization here, I see there's just those background chords. So that seems good. And we can take a listen. Nice. All right, so from there, you can customize the guitar settings if you like. Uh, the open tuning is set to standard. And the fretting limits are by default the 15th fret. So depending on your guitar and the shape of it, uh, some frets may or may not be reachable and you could change these if you need to. So lastly, on the final tab, you're going to select your cost function. So the cost functions are basically different ways of calculating which tab or which fretting position may be more difficult to play as the computer program tries to decide from different options which ones it should give to you as the instructions. So I recommend the relative fret distance as the default, but sometimes other ones can perform better. And we'll actually see that here. So we'll hit generate tab and it'll take a minute. And so we'll fast forward. All right. So hit the download and open that a new tab and we can see here some positions that'd be difficult to play i know from experience you know open note here with a uh, first fret on two strings it's kind of awkward to play so now we'll see how when we hit the aggregate cost and just run that once again now when i open this one we can see here that the tab has changed so if i just switch between these two tabs quick you can see different numbers showing up so that chord that was previously suggested to play open and first and first fret is now showing open at six and six. So a different result. To close off the video, I'll share an example of how I use this uh, in the Google Collaboratory environment. So we can see that because I had debug mode is equal to true, there was certain text printouts from the version that we were running. So I'll scroll back to the top to see the interface, and now I'll drop a new file in. So this time I'll use happy birthday as my example. Happy birthday. And we'll see what parts we have in there. I'll go just the first 10 bars to make it process faster for the sake of this video. And there we see we have three parts, piano, uh, piano left hand, piano right hand, and bass. So we'll listen to that see what it sounds like. Nice. OK, 
okay so again we can cut that part if we want to and let's just say we're interested in the uh the whole song this time so i'll put that as 100 and now we'll view the score again and this might take a minute all right so now i have more of the song and we can see there's two pages so you could actually always use this page sw swapper to see the next page as well and so once again i'll go to tab generation and i'll use relative and generate the tab and we'll see what it looks like so the reason I typically use the Google Collaboratory environment here for monitoring the function is because you can see the work in progress when you're generating a tab. So here, here we can see we're at 56 and, and, and so on out of 220 uh, chunks in the song. It just breaks the song into chunks. So that's the ID we're looking at. Now it's going much faster. And then you can see we just finished. So whereas the full screen interface kind of leaves you uh, without a a really confident sense of what's going on in the background. This one will show you what's going on. And if there's an error, it'll say so and you'll see the printout. So at least you'll know you can restart the interface by hitting this cell and then hitting that one again. So here's our tab for happy birthday. And if I scroll way back up top to the interface once again, we will see the tab is available for download over there. So I'll open that one up and there's your tab for happy birthday. So that's pretty much all for this video. Hope you found it interesting and useful and that you might be inspired to use some of these tools in the future. Thanks for watching and take care.